welcome to the Wolf Den Podcast. How are you doing? I'm just oh, great. Everything's bro, good. No. Everything's cool, oh, man. Oh no, dude. Oh, it's fine. Oh. I haven't been. I have. I'm fine. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot. To oh close. no, and I then... forgot to close the door. <laughs> Zim, clearly, come here. Clearly, Zim, come here. Bob hat. It has the Pax Pox because it's affecting his I don't brain. Have the Pax Pox. <laughs> Everything's fine. Hey, Zimo. Zim, hey, come make here. an appearance on the podcast. Here, doggo. There you go. Come to Uncle Will. There you go. Do not pee on my computer. There you go. He doesn't okay. pee. Okay. He exclusively poops. Uh, <laughs> even better. Also, Will, Will, let's address it. I go ahead. I finally got a new computer. <laughs> Don't be too excited. It's refurbished because I'm a cheapskate. Come here. It's an M3, it's an though. M it's an M3, yeah. M3 now what Pro. M okay. The, the base model M3 That's Pro, fine. yeah. Yeah, because I don't need anything too, like, power intensive for what yeah. I do. But I wanted, like, the extra RAM and the extra hard drive space. And that's what I got. Good. But refurbished. And they make you know it because, like, the box says certified refurbished on it. They don't put it in, like, a new box. They want you to know. <laughs> uh, I'm sure it's plenty powerful. I I'm mean. I'm still rocking the M1. Yeah. Max. Yeah. I was going to. I was going to go that route. But. For the same price, like I get like a a more recent chip that'll be supported for a little bit longer. I think MKBHD also still uses the M1 he does. Max. Yeah. yeah, even though you know he's doing like 8K videos yeah. on on his. Yeah. Also, too, this is the black one. Yeah, like, that's way darker. Sick. Yeah, I didn't even and know. I really like it. It yeah. came in that. I actually, yeah, that's new for the M3. Yes. Yeah. Is, yeah. is that shade black? Yeah. Anna has um two. Got she's got she's got. She's got this color and she's got a, a lighter colored one. Okay. Because she bought one. Yeah. And then immediately after, her job gave her one. <laughs> <laughs> so she kind of bought one for no reason. Mm. Um, but anyway, yeah. So I've seen all the colors but that one. Yeah. And when that came out, I went to the Apple store to see if they had it because I wanted to see it in person yeah. and they didn't have it. It is a lot darker than I What's cool is uh, the MagSafe cable that comes with it is also black, but the brick is not. <laughs> Oh, so it just plugs into the standard white Apple brick. Interesting. Yeah. Well, uh, we have many docking stations all over the house okay. for, for all of these MacBooks. <laughs> so pick, I, pick a place. I, I do need a new KVM because the one you gave me, like two of the USB ports, like don't work anymore for some reason. So I either have to figure that out or just get a new KVM. Well, I have a lot of these. Uh, I'll show you afterward. I have one that would actually be pretty nice, mm -hmm. uh, but. Uh, yeah, well, we'll 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 see. I I use these uh razor yeah, uh, yeah, ones, I know you but they're the a little ones. they're a little expensive. Yeah. I have some cheaper ones that are uh one of my sponsors. The hell are they is called? U Green. U Green. There you go. It's actually one the green thing right there. That's a U Green. There you go. Uh, so yeah, we'll we'll give All you right. one of those. Sweet. But I don't know how good. Well, I mean, how many monitors are you plugging in? I'm only plugging into one, but I have it'll be fine. I have It'll this and my nine to five laptop, so I need like something to switch back and forth between the two. Is that one USB C? Yes. It should be fine. Okay. Yeah. It, 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 yeah. One USB C cable to, to rule them all. Okay. Okay. Guys, hello. We got a big show to talk about a lot of stuff, namely Xbox. Phil Spencer wants to uh, make handhelds, and yes. he wants to have everything work on Xbox. Yes, he's really he's really trying, guys. He's really trying to make Xbox work. Um, I don't know if he's succeeding or not, but like, bless his heart. Before we talk about that, though. We got a lot of notifications. Also, Wolf Den Dad in the chat oh, said, no. I am not going to the doctor anymore. I'll just go to Apple and get refurbished. Doesn't doesn't work like that. Also, like if you get refurbished, they put you up on the store and like you gotta be fast, man, because like someone will snap you up like that. <laughs> Thank you to George McFarlane for 36 months. Wow, three years. Crazy. Will, how has life been treating you? And more importantly, will you ever return to YouTube? Well, Bob, how was your coffee? Coffee was. Well, keep in mind, this laptop was expensive. So I do need to start paying it off. So please be expecting my OnlyFans to come real soon. <laughs> <laughs> do you mind saying how much it was? It was under, it was, I'll say it's 400 dollars under what um a new version of this laptop okay. would be um who else uh thrill house thank you for the five gifted subs 
Will Wolf, damn it. Thank you for the 48 months. Hey, Wolf Bros, did you see the trailer for the new Bad Boys movie? I did not. It's been <laughs> directed. It's being directed by the guys who did Batgirl. Oh. Boy, I sure hope it makes David Zaz Zaslav mm -hmm. feel like shit seeing such a cool ass trailer get all the hype that could have gone to his DC movie. There is multiple people who directed it. It was two guys. Okay. Um, they they directed um Bad Boys for Life, the third Bad Boys movie. Now they're directing a new one. Oh, the I new one that. looks awesome. I I I just <laughs> I saw the trailer, like the thumbnail, yeah. and I just ignored it. Oh no, watch it. It's, okay. it's really cool. And like Bad Boys 3 was actually the best one. Oh. So yeah, but you feel like a dummy now, Davey. <laughs> uh <laughs> Riley, thanks for the 19 months. Oh, 169. Nice. I don't know what that means. Also, oh, that's the episode number. Yes. Also, what's up, Wolf Bros? Hope you're doing well. We're doing good. Thank you. <laughs> I have to burp. Flights, flight and service. Thanks for the three months. Glad you're back. Hope PAX was the shiznit. Uh, yeah, how I was, was at PAX? PAX. Okay? It was, was very it good? Good. good. It was very good. Uh, I played some good games and some bad games. Oh, boy. Also, there were not a lot of games. Really? Yeah, it was pretty barren this huh. year. It's because this year there's nothing fucking coming out. I guess not. Uh, Blackbird, thanks for the 25 months. Uh, Spud Potato, thanks for the five gifted subs, also for the three months. Did you know that the critically acclaimed MMO RPG, I met this guy at PAX, <laughs> <laughs> has a free trial and includes the entirety of A Realm Reborn and the award winning harp? They, Final Fantasy XIV was at PAX. It they was had, at they, PAX. They had a big booth. It was at PAX when I went to PAX in oh. 2019. <laughs> oh, God. When we did our signing, we were between Final Fantasy XIV and Larian, uh, Boulder's yeah. Gate. Uh, thank you, Spot Potato. Wave999 says, nine, well, thank you for the 19 months. Uh, Uber Yoshi, thanks for the five months. The hype train goes to, oh, we did a little hype train. I haven't streamed in a week, so that's yeah. why we got so many uh, notifications. Atif, uh, thank you for the 19 months. Hey, Bob and Will, missed catching you live. Happy to see you. Well, thank you. Did you get um, Willow Davis on YouTube? I was getting okay. there. Thanks for the two months, Willow. How was PAX? And are you going to PAX Summer D's? That's a D's nuts joke, and I'm not falling <laughs> for it. He's, uh, he wanted me to say, what's PAX Summer, summer, summer D's? D's? He's going to say, PAX Summer, summer D's, D's nuts, nuts in your yes. mouth. Yes. Fuck you, Willow. <laughs> D's nuts jokes are always funny always jin wong thanks for the oh watch streak hello how you doing same thing with ligama shut shut <laughs> the fuck up uh let's talk about uh uh freaking xbox making a handle okay let's do that somebody said what's on the rog there's nothing on it just it's just the bike just screen. sitting there yeah uh, a, ha a handheld Xbox? Microsoft's gaming chief can't stop thinking about it. Neither can I. Uh, Phil Spencer has tried all of the new PC gaming handhelds, the ROG Ally, the, the Lenovo Legion Go, Lenovo. and it, it, it should have a better name, <laughs> and the Steam Deck. He's impressed, but he can't shake one question. How, how would he make them more Xbox? I want my Lenovo Legion Go to feel like an Xbox, Spencer told Polygon in an interview during the annual uh, game developer conference. I brought the Lenovo Go uh, with me to GDC. I'm on the airplane, and I have a list of everything that makes it not feel like an Xbox. I love this. Uh, forget, forget about the brand. More like, are all of my games there? Do all my games show up with the save files that I want? I'll tell you one game that doesn't work right now. It's driving me crazy. Is Fallout 76. It doesn't have cross-save. I love that. I also love that he's using the Legion Go, yeah. which is uh, instead of the Asus ROG Alley, which they like... Uh, uh, then they partner with them. Yeah, they yeah. made a big push for the ROG ally. Yeah, uh, so it's cool to see them use the new thing. Mm -hmm. uh, they know that there's going to be a lot of these PC handhelds coming out from these PC manufacturers, uh, and it's interesting to see them care about what all of these handheld manufacturers are getting wrong. Yeah, and trying to make a push to to get them right. Uh, where was I? Uh, I want to be able to boot into the Xbox app in a full screen, but in a com but in a compat mode, 
and all of my social experiences is there. Like I want it to feel like the dash of my Xbox when I turn on the television, except I want it on those devices. According to Spencer, the Xbox hardware team led by Ramon uh, Sones is considering different hardware form factors and things that they could do um, as it plans the future of the Xbox hardware. Uh, what should we build that will find new players? Spencer said that will allow people to play at times when they couldn't, uh, when they couldn't go play in the past. In our expansive interview, uh, Spencer describes two approaches to making Xbox available on handhelds: the hardware versus the software approach. As he said, he has strong feelings about the handheld Xbox device, how a handheld Xbox device should feel. Uh, but he also recognizes having learned from the console business that players may choose brands other than Xbox. For those players, Spencer wants to improve the Xbox handheld gaming software experience too, particularly for people who have devices running Windows like the Legion Go or the Ally. I like the fact that Valve, Lenovo, and Asus uh, went out and innovated in new form factors. And I will say that when I'm playing on those devices, it almost feels like a console than a PC, nine times out of 10. The things that usually frustrate me more, the use, things that usually frustrate me are more Windows-based than device-based, which is an area I feel uh, some ownership of. Like I want to be able to log in with a controller. I've got my list of things we should go do. Yeah. I just picture him with like a, a moleskin, like writing down like all of his stuff. Yeah, he should. Yeah. <laughs> it, th this is fantastic news because there's a lot of stuff that I've been frustrated right. with. Right. And... He's right. He should take ownership over this because it. He's the guy to fix. He's the it. guy at Xbox. Yeah. He's if anybody's gonna fix this, it's him. And mm -hmm. and uh, all of these uh, manufacturers are trying to get into the space. Uh, and it would be a lot easier if Windows was easier to use yeah. in this space. He's he mentioned uh, logging in with a controller. When you have a Windows handheld, uh, it defaults to logging in with a pin. Yeah. They, a lot of them have uh, fingerprint readers, but the fingerprint readers are always fucking horrible. Right. These MacBooks have pretty decent fingerprint readers. Right. I still don't use it, though. I still yeah. just type in my password. Uh, typing in a password on a Windows handheld is terrible. It, you, you, you end up using the touchscreen, and you just use a pin, yeah. and it sucks. So I try to remove the password on all of them. Um. And that's just one of them of the many problems. Besides that, uh, just navigating the UI with a controller is, uh, uh, with the touch screen is, is it's horrible. Yeah, it's just an all around horrible experience. And also being able to uh, link your saves across stuff, it's all great. Right now, all my stuff is very segmented because I got uh, Game Pass and Steam yeah. and whatever. I try to keep everything localized with Steam. Uh, and that helps a lot, but it would be really nice if Game Pass stuff worked better across uh, PC, PC handheld, and Xbox and right. stuff like that. Uh, Spencer has spent his tenure at Microsoft pushing Xbox to be both a console experience and a software experience that follows players wherever they enjoy games. That philosophy expands with his views on handheld gaming. From a ga game creator standpoint, uh, Spencer said, I can then go build a single version of my game that spans more hardware and reaches more customers. Uh, and I would say for players, it reduces friction. Like if I want to go play on my console right now, uh, if I want to play my console games on the go with a handheld, I don't want to only be able to buy one brand of handheld, right? I want everything that we're doing uh, in the handheld space to be great. But if somebody chooses to play today somewhere else, I don't want them to feel like a lesser Xbox player. Over the past seven years, we've seen Xbox development team uh, get creative with its software, moving games to new platforms, building up the Game Pass subscription service, and making games playable on smartphones through streaming. As uh, we wrapped up our conversation, Spencer wouldn't outright announce an official Xbox handheld, but he did say uh, he sees this, he sees a similar level of creativity coming to hardware that Xbox has brought to software. I think it's important, said, uh, said Spencer. Uh, you and I, we've been around for a couple of console days, We've been around for a couple of days. Look at the real inflection points in our industry. Like at the Wii, um, it was hardware innovation that was linked with great software innovation. Now, now Xbox just needs to get to the software part. <sighs> I feel like they're almost there with the software because like they have like Game Pass on, you know, the Ally and the Legion Go, but it's a half step. Xbox does great software. Mm-hmm. If we're not talking about the games. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> they need to have some killer apps yeah. with the games. But but besides that, everything else is amazing. I love right. their their UX. Uh, they have some of the best UIs around. Um, but that's not saying too much. Yeah. A lot of gaming has pretty terrible UIs. Um, but yeah, I love their ecosystem. They got so much good stuff. It's just a shame that they don't have any like you know they they need some first party stuff. Yeah. Or something to get people to want to use an Xbox. Um, but he's 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 got the right he's got a lot of the right ideas. Uh, I'm glad that companies like Asus and Lenovo and even Valve stepped in and uh, were like, "Hey, we can enter this space." And it's yeah. telling Microsoft, like, "Hey, uh, there's something here. We should we should work on it." Mm-hmm. I also hope that it brings Xbox to Steam Deck in a better way because right now, yeah. uh, you have Game Pass, but it's like a a, a a difficult thing to put on there, and it's yeah. kind of shitty. It's it's like trying to get the Epic Game Store or you know PS Five Remote Play working on there. Like you have to have some sort of know how in order to do it, rather than it just working. You know? Yeah, like they have on their on the xbox official website they have a tutorial on how to do it but it's a huge pain in the ass mm-hmm. uh it might be more difficult than those other launchers yeah. i learned there's like a thing there's like a there's like an app you can download that will just install all of the launchers for you right uh, maybe they maybe game pass is on there i haven't tried it in a while uh but when i installed game pass it was a huge hassle um it would be great if there was just a linux app or if they if it was just on steam that would solve a, yeah. lo- a lot of things. And it's Game Pass. So, like, why not? If it's just streaming, it's not like you're losing any any uh, any customers. Well, I think the goal is for it to not just be Game Pass. I think the goal is for it to be Xbox proper. So, it's not just streaming. It's you download the games and you right. play it natively. That, well, that's what Phil Spencer's hoping for for PC handhelds. Right. But for Steam, for, for the Steam Deck. Right. I understand why they wouldn't want you to uh like uh purchase games through well no no you're right though. You're yeah. right. Why not just play these games on why not just have a launcher just like you would uh, the Epic Games right. store. You put the Epic Games yeah. store on there. Yeah. And why I not? can download games uh from there onto yeah. the hard drive and then play them from like natively from the drive. There would need to be a little bit of work to be done with proton and whatnot yeah but uh yeah why so not it probably would be easier to get it to work on like a windows device like the ally but i also think too the xbox um os itself i think is a much more stable and game friendly os than windows is oh yeah and it's it would be much easier if it were if we were to get a, an xbox handheld it's literally an xbox handheld it's the system in a smaller form factor with a screen on it because that would lead to a much more uniform Xbox experience rather than downloading a separate app that is sort of like this halfway point. Well, in my head, Phil Spencer is thinking of a straight up Windows handheld that is yeah. just more catered to uh playing games, right. playing Microsoft games. Mm-hmm. And in my head that is literally just this I mean it would need the Xbox app, which exists, is just kind of not great. Yeah. It would need that to be a little better. But more so, Windows just needs to be like, oh, this is a handheld. Yes. So here's your handheld experience. Mm-hmm. When you turn the thing on, it should be a special version of Windows that's like, okay, we're going to set this up like a handheld. Yeah. So I can use the controller to do the setup process. The touchscreen will be a lot easier to use because they know that the touch screen's a tiny thing instead of being a instead of pretending like it's always a computer. It all it almost needs to be like what Windows 8 was. Where like Windows 8 had the tiles. Exactly. And it was great. It was great it was great <laughs> for <laughs> certain screens. It was great for, for my cer- Microsoft Surface Pro. Exactly. And other tablets. It was great. It was bad for the desktop. You know what it was? <laughs> it was good for tablets. It was actually good for like TVs because like the icons were big and like you yes. can see them faster. But like when you get to like actual desktop, like that's when like things re- you ran into problems right there because it was just easier to use the traditional Windows interface. It literally but, just looks like an Xbox. Yeah, well, Xbox has not changed since no. this came out. No, because remember every like every Microsoft device was supposed to have the same uniform look. Yeah, like the phone, the Windows phones, 
the Surface, the PC, the Xbox. Mm -hmm. It's all supposed to have that uniform Metro look. But the Metro uh, look on PC, like you tap a you tap a button and it brings you to the traditional Windows desktop. Yeah, and that's what everybody did. Yeah, they, they, but but on desktop, <laughs> yeah. on desktop, you would just tap the Windows key and it would bring you back. But uh, my point is, like, if you were to do a Windows handheld, like, you would need that overlay. You would need to essentially bring that back yeah. in order to have a much better catered experience. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, but I'm saying have something to differentiate whether or not it's a desktop or a Windows handheld. Like, right. like the handheld should have a unique handheld experience. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't, I, it would be great if you could also have that experience on a desktop, but give us the option and, and, and have it outright when I turn the thing on for the first time. Right. Cause right now when you turn a windows handheld on for the first time, it thinks it's a PC yeah. and it thinks you have a keyboard and mouse connected and, and it's a horrible thing to navigate through. Um, so yeah, I I think there's a a lot of room for improvement for Microsoft, and they, mm -hmm. namely I think having an Xbox launcher on Steam. Now you got me all excited for that. That yeah. would be that would be a really cool thing. Other other than that though, Microsoft just straight up needs to have a better uh, experience for handheld users, mm -hmm. and and Phil Spencer's gotta work with them to achieve that. Yeah. If he wants to do it on his own, he, it would be an app, and that's not good yeah. enough. It's gotta straight up be. Uh, uh, handheld version of Windows. Well, I don't see why there can't be, you know, they do the, the dedicated Xbox handheld, but also have the app for people who already have Windows PCs handhelds, you know? Well, when you're saying a dedicated Xbox handheld, you're thinking not Windows at all. Correct. Yeah, I think... Yeah, I don't think that's reasonable. Why not? I think that's an extra step. I, I, I think that's, I think that's unne an unnecessary step too far. Because Windows already exists and it's it, it could be right. It, it would be very minimal effort to make Windows perfect for a handheld right. environment. It would be a huge undertaking to make an Xbox handheld that's just straight up the Xbox OS. Yeah, uh, and it doesn't seem worth it. I know, but like at the same time, if they want it to, if they want it to be a dedicated gaming handheld, they I think they need something a bit more stable than Windows. And I think the thing that could, is most catered to gaming is the Xbox OS. I think... Mm, I see what you're saying because... Uh, I mean, these Windows handhelds are a lot more stable than you think. Mm -hmm. But they're still not a, an Xbox. Right. It's still not going to run everything great. Uh, that might cause some issues, I would imagine. Like right now, developers are mad at Microsoft because... The Series S can't run mm -hmm. everything. Yeah. I would imagine a Windows, an, an Xbox handheld would be pretty similar. Mm -hmm. It would have similar issues. So I think just making it straight up a Windows thing might be the, the, the way to go. Right. There. And then have things that are like, you know, like Valve has a list of games that they know are certified. Yeah. Microsoft could do the same thing with their handheld. Uh, H3 Catacomb says, uh, Xbox OS runs a modified Windows slash Hyper-V environment and runs the games as a virtual machine. But the hardware is static and not very like a PC. Maybe they go that route eventually by offering the virtual machine. But people, I hope, I'm, I hope VM means virtual machine, <laughs> but people with low-end systems would bitch about performance. Well, I think any like an Xbox handheld would obviously have to be like a uniform system spec, mm -hmm. right? Because like the allies are all the same system spec, minus, plus or minus like a hard um, hard drive or RAM or whatnot. You know. Well, there's the the ally has the version that has the shitty processor. Oh, okay. There, there, there are some varying degrees to all of these handhelds. Right. Uh, I, I the think Steam Deck then, because like that. There's no yeah. difference between versions other than you know hard drive space. Yeah, there's slight performance update on the OLED, but mm -hmm. it's it's marginal. Um, yeah, again, I think that if Microsoft has their own handheld, uh, they would have a compatibility list or yeah. something like games that are certified to work on here. Or you go to the storefront and it's like these are all the games and this is how good they're gonna run. Mm -hmm. Some games uh might be play at your own risk kind of thing. 
Anyway, uh, we got more notifications. We got beat em ups. Yeah, hey. you know that guy? Hey, uh, 39 months. Hello, Will. And then a heart like this. Hey. Uh, I'm here too, but okay. Riser, he thank, saw you the, you. <laughs> thank you for the 28 months. And Rookia X Play, thank you for the two months. And hello, Fried Biscuit. How are you? Um, All right, uh, there's more to this yes. Microsoft story, though. There's a whole big um, Phil Spencer interview with Polygon. Um, they only posted two parts of the interview, though. The next part is about the Epic Game Store coming to, my, coming to Xbox, maybe. I don't know. Phil wants it. Phil doesn't just want Xbox games on other consoles. He wants other video game retailers on Xbox, too. In an interview with Microsoft CEO of gaming during the annual Game Developers Conference, Spencer told Polygon about the ways he'd like to break down the walled gardens um, that have historically limited players to making purchases through the first-party store uh, stores tied to each console. Or, in layperson terms, uh, why should... Uh, why you should be able to buy games from other stores on Xbox, not just the official storefront. Spencer mentioned uh, his frustrations with closed ecosystems, so he asked for clarity. Could he really see a future where stores like itch.io and the Epic Game Store exist on Xbox? Was it just a matter of figuring out mountains of paperwork to get there? Yes, said Spencer. <laughs> Consider our history as the Windows company. Nobody would blink twice if I said, hey, when you're using a PC... Uh, you get to decide the type of experience you have by picking where you buy games. There is a real value in that. Spencer believes console players would benefit from that freedom too, uh, and so would console makers like Microsoft. Ex uh, Spencer explained how in the past, console makers would typically subsidize the cost of expensive hardware, knowing that a portion of every dollar spent on games from the platform over the years would eventually make it back to the console maker. Then in time, the console maker could recoup this, uh, the subsidy and hopefully more. But Spencer said Moore's Law has slowed down. The price of the components of consoles aren't coming down as fast as they have in previous generations. Worse, he explained, the console market isn't growing, with more gamers moving to PC and handheld options. Now, the notion of subsidizing a console and forcing players to purchase games through the official storefront to help recoup costs might not make sense. The walls... Uh, meant to lock people into consoles might be motivating them to stay out. Subsidizing hardware becomes more challenging in today's world, Spencer said. And I will say, and this me uh, this may seem too altruistic, I don't know that it's growing the industry. So I think, what are the barriers? What are the things that create friction in today's world for creators and players? And how can we be part of opening up that model? That that's interesting because that's what I was thinking. Like. If you just allow people to use the Epic Game Store on the Xbox, how are you going to make any money? Yeah. But he's got a point. The console market isn't growing. A lot of people are playing on PCs and mobile and stuff. Mm -hmm. So a big part of that is where are my games? Where is it easiest to buy the games? Right. And a lot of for a lot of people, it's not on the console. Right. And you, like... For us, we talk about consoles a lot, so we're in the console ecosystem. But yeah. people outside the ecosystem, it's a barrier to break into because mm -hmm. you're locking all of your stuff there. Right. But if you allow people to transition the stuff that they already have, it would make things a lot easier, and that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Uh, where was I? The answer, in part, is scrapping exclusivity on more and more Xbox games. Spencer explained that the game uh, experience is hindered uh, when it ma when it matters what console we play our games on or what shops uh, sell our games. As an example, he pointed to Sea of Thieves, a player he explained uh, shouldn't have to worry about what hardware they or their friends have. Uh, they should just know if their, if their friends have and want to play Sea of Thieves. Now, Spencer said, if we want to play on a gaming PC, then I feel like I'm more... I feel like I'm more a continuous part of a gaming ecosystem as a whole, as opposed to on a console. My gaming is kind of shared, uh, to use a gaming term, based on the different closed ecosystems that I have uh, that I have uh, played across. Spencer's views sound reasonable on paper. The console market is flat. The PC market is growing in part because it gives players a choice in where they buy games. So if consoles uh, want to bring players back, they'll need to be more like PCs. 
Uh, and that means bringing down the walled gardens that for decades have protected the financial model of game consoles. If Spencer wants to make that vision a reality, then it's reasonable that we could one day boot up our Xboxes and see the Epic Game Store, H.io, and other shops waiting to sell us games, and hopefully competing with one another to bring players the best possible deals. Yeah, so that, uh, I wasn't even thinking about this, but somebody on Twitter uh, was like, imagine if they just put Steam on the Xbox. That would be crazy. That would be wild. Mm. I have so many Steam games, and it would yeah. get me to play the Xbox way more. Yeah. And I w that's what got me thinking, like, why would I then ever buy a game on Xbox? Steam would open it up so much more yeah. for me. But if they just put an Xbox launcher on the Steam Deck, yeah. I'm, I'm fucking bouncing between <laughs> everything then, mm -hmm. you know? If they put an Xbox launcher on the Steam Deck, I'm playing Game Pass all right. day, every day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and vice versa, then. If they put Steam on the Xbox, I'm using my Xbox more. Yeah. So yeah. it's all making sense now. Yeah, I think getting more ways to play games on a console is the way to go. Mm -hmm. Because PC, uh, PC market may be growing and you know mobile gaming may be growing. But there's still the want and desire of gamers to play on a TV sitting on a couch 10, 15 feet away. Like that is still there. That's how I like to play my games. That's how a lot of people like to play their games. So, you know, you buy the box and you put the box t on your TV and you're stuck with that box for like five or six years. Mm -hmm. And you have to buy the games through the box. Yeah. Yeah. So to have more options to buy games, not just through the box, but through different stores, it's like, you know, back when physical games were a thing. You know, Best Buy might have the game for one price, but Target has the same game, but they're running a sale for a little bit cheaper. That creates competition, yeah. and that makes you um, more savvy in where you buy games. Because you go to Target, and you buy the game for cheaper, and then you see they have these other games for sale. Or maybe Best Buy had the game uh, for a sale that day, and they, you know, have a... You know, they have a buy one, get one deal. Or yeah. you see, the, oh, they didn't get rid of their DVDs yet. I'll go get a DVD. See, see but the reason why exclusivity or or, or whatever worked so well for these companies is that, like, whoever's on top, whoever is selling the most consoles mm -hmm. is the one making the most money and selling the most games. Yeah. So, like, everybody's got a PlayStation. Uh, I can't buy my place. I can't play my PlayStation games on my Xbox, you know, right. because PlayStation's like, why would I share? You know, I'm already making all this yeah. money. But Microsoft and and Valve already share. Yeah. They're already doing it on mm -hmm. PC. So uh, why not? Why not allow the storefronts to cross paths elsewhere? It would it would help both parties in that situation. Yeah. Uh, in this case, Phil Spencer was specifically talking about Epic. And Epic would love to oh, just Epic be Oh, Epic would 100% yeah, like be that's just there a huge, in a heartbeat. That only uh, helps Epic. Really. Yeah. <laughs> but he's saying that uh, it would help them too because yeah. uh, I mean, cross-pollination is good, I guess. We got more on Epic and their Epic Game Store later in the okay. in the episode. But yeah, that seems to be Epic's thing right now is just like put our store everywhere. Even, yeah. where, even where we don't belong. This is a very interesting uh, take on... on the industry and i think that it's all of this shit's gonna happen i think i yeah. think this is how microsoft's gonna survive survive yeah and, and, because let's or be, this let's is how be xbox clear. is gonna survive let's be clear like sony's not having this conversation because no. playstation is doing just fine nintendo is not having this conversation nintendo will never have this conversation nintendo will never have this conversation yes. playstation might end up having this conversation you think so many years from now I think if all of these companies are playing nice with each other, mm -hmm. I think that Sony's going to be left out and they might start losing part of their market share. Okay. Kind of like with um, cross-play. Yeah. No, yeah. exactly like, like cross-play. Yeah. Uh, a lot of... I don't think uh, Japanese uh, gamers were into PC stuff until very recently. Right. They all, they're all like getting PC games now. Uh, so I think that that, that that's a new concept to them. Yeah. And I think that that if Microsoft, you know, keeps playing nice with all of these, uh, other manufacturers or all these software companies, 
uh, they're gonna Sony's gonna start feeling left out. Right. Right. I saw the ROG Ally in a bunch of stores when I was over there. Same yeah, thing yeah. with like all these like fringe ones too, like the One X player and stuff. Okay. So that shit's really popular with them. And if and if uh, you know Microsoft makes it easier to play games across all platforms, across all stuff. I mean, Xbox is not popular over there. No. But it could be if if everything just works on it. If it's yeah. a if it's a tiny cheap computer that can play all that shit, yeah. then it's probably going to end up becoming pretty popular. Yeah. And, and uh, you you can get an Xbox and play all of this shit across all platforms, mm -hmm. or you can get a PlayStation and be completely locked in. Well, I think that speaks back to like the, um, the lofty promise of the PlayStation Vita, because mm -hmm. that, that introduced the concept of crossplay. You buy the game, and it's available on your PS4 and your PS Vita. Mm-hmm. And that never really took off, mostly because Sony didn't really like back it. To yeah, that was called crossplay. Isn't yeah. that ridiculous? Yes, because it's still Sony to Sony. But it's that idea of like you buy the game once and you can take it with you, yeah. like on your mobile device and stuff. That they tried it, it didn't really work. Actually, they call it cross buy. Cross buy. Yeah, that's what it was called. Yeah, and the cross save was like you could transfer between. Yeah, the devices. save. File. But still, like they tried it and they didn't really like. Put their muscle behind it. It was all. It's that's why yeah. I bought a Vita because yeah. of the cross buy. Yeah, I love the idea of being able to play a game on both my PlayStation Four and yeah. Vita at the same time. And then Nintendo figured out how to do it. But Nintendo's way is like it's literally the same device. Yeah, like you have to plug it in or you take it. It's one or the other. Yeah, you know. Also, uh, there's a lot of Sony games on Steam. Yeah, so if they put Steam on an Xbox fucking over <laughs> <laughs> yeah you just have to wait a year for them to mm -hmm. come out on on steam well not really i mean hell divers yeah was a, a massively successful for them for that mm -hmm. reason for the cross cross uh play reason so i i hope i mean that this is nothing but good news for i think everybody yeah uh, i'm excited for that nintendo never has to worry about this i think no. nintendo is the only ones who can get away with ha having uh their exclusivity because their first party stuff is just is worth being walled in for. Yeah. Um and it's you know it's not that expensive. And right. the, and their hardware is usually pretty good. Well, their games are usually still expensive, even the digital yes. games. Yes. Yes. Um so yeah, being able to get them being their super... hardware is among the cheapest. Right. And their hardware is I mean, it's not powerful, but it's solid. Like, yeah. you're not going to have any issues. Yeah. Unlike some other handheld gaming devices I've recently used, but that's neither here oh, nor there. Oh, speaking of which, <laughs> a little update on your uh, Steam Deck. Yes. Um, uh, remember I sent you a Reddit thread of a potential fix for it. Yes. I still don't understand it, but did it work? No. Okay. I did it last night. did right. not even come close to working. Okay. So we're back to it not working at all. It, it could be a short. That's what I'm thinking. Right. Of. There's a short somewhere that is making it think that the button is being held down. Okay. I can't. I can't figure it out. I gotta. I, I gotta remove the button board again, because I'm baffled that removing the button board, it it still thinks the button is being held down. Okay. I'm holding the button in my hand, completely disconnected, and the Steam Deck yeah. thinks I'm holding the button down. Something's wacky. Anyway, uh, I guess that's it for the Microsoft side of things. Okay. Now let's do this. Ooh. Backlog. 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 For the record, it's exactly nine o'clock. We nailed it. <laughs> wow. All right. Look at that. Baby. Uh, welcome to the backlog, guys. Uh, Will, what is the backlog? Backlog is a segment of the Wolf Den podcast uh, where we go through our entire video game collection, every game we've ever bought over the past almost 40 years now, because I'm an old fart, uh, gets put into an Excel spreadsheet. And today we're going to pick one at random and talk about it, regardless of whether or not we've played it. Over 900 games in this beast. Yeah, so uh, let's pick one. We're doing right. number 583. 583... And that would be Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy for the PlayStation 4. Oh, this is all you. I this is me. I did not play this at all. Yes. There's a second one? 
No. No. Okay. No, there's a there's a Telltale Guardians of the Galaxy game. Oh. Uh, but this is the one made by uh, Square Enix. Oh. Uh, okay. Yeah. So this is an interesting game. This game. Came, I heard a lot of great things about this game. This game came out in the shadow of uh, Square Enix's Avengers game, which mm-hmm. sucks. <laughs> It's a bad game. It it thought, what's a good uh, genre for the Avengers? Destiny. And they made a Destiny, a, a shitty Destiny for the Avengers. Guardians of the Galaxy is not that. It is a single player, story focused game. You play as Star Lord and only Star Lord. Uh, nobody else plays as the other Guardians. And you go on this um, really lengthy uh, adventure throughout the galaxy of uh, just doing. Uh, typical Guardian stuff. You got to save the universe at one point. Uh, it's very clearly, it's one of those situations where you look at it and you're like, okay, this is clearly inspired by the movie. Yeah. But I, to that, I say, what else is it going to be inspired by? Like the movie, the movie is like very clearly defined Guardians of the Galaxy in the same way that the Blade movies define Blade for everyone because comic book Blade is very different from movie Blade. Uh-huh. The comic book Guardians is very different from movie Guardians. So they just copy what people know. Oh, I feel like comic book Guardians is going to start homogenizing. Okay, they already have. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So what I know about this game is that it's all about... It's very story heavy. There's a dialogue trees. Yeah. And it's all about your relationship with the other members of Yes, of the and Guardians. that's all very cool. Because mm-hmm. like what you say like does affect how the rest of the team like treats you and like helps you out. Cause like there's a part early on where you have to bridge a gap and one of your options is to just take rocket and throw him across the gap. If you take that route, he'll be mad at you and won't help you later in the game. And you have to actually repair your relationship with him. Mm-hmm. So this, like I said, the story is very long, but it, it does work and it is satisfying and it is very emotional and that's all great. The actual gameplay of it though, mm-hmm is kind of weak okay because the problem with uh the actual gameplay of guardians and you kind of seeing it on screen here is there's a lot of like linear exploration there's a combat section and then it's back to linear exploration like there's very little variety in the game itself you'll you'll come to a point you'll explore it a little bit try to figure out where to go You got to use your abilities, your team's abilities to try and explore the land. And then you'll get to a combat point. And then uh, you and your team have to combine together to try and beat the horde of enemies and then move on. And then you'll get to a cutscene, And that's where the dialogue trees come in. And it's like rinse and repeat for like 12 hours. Mm -hmm. And that, and look, it's fun in the beginning, but after a while, you kind of get bored with the way the game is structured like you know what you know what the beats are you know what's going to happen it becomes too uh it becomes very rhythmic in like what you're doing i'd imagine that a game like this is uh pretty generic in the in the actual gameplay like what you're doing yeah you're just kind of playing it so because you like the characters and you want to see where the characters yeah go. like the i'll tell you the art direction in this game is beautiful mm-hmm. it's got tremendous style they tr- they go for the um, the soundtrack feel of like the movies and they picked like great songs on the soundtrack so like it's it's style makes up for a lot in the game cuz like the substance loses itself by the end I- i'm i always forget that you only play as star lord yeah it it feels weird you know what i think happened i think this was going to be a multiplayer game mm-hmm. and this was going to be I don't want to say live servicey, but it was going to be like an online co-op type thing. Yeah. And then they saw the negative reaction to Avengers and had to quickly like change course. Interesting. So uh, that that's just like a theory of mine. I don't know if that's true, but I feel like it could very well be true. You would have to change the scope really early on in the game to just not let you play three other characters. Yeah. You know? Well, okay. So actually this four other characters right yeah well there, yeah there's star lord there's uh drax gamora rocket and Groot. there's five there's five other characters besides oh no no star star lord and four others yes yeah okay 
Uh, so yeah, I mean, it would make sense to have a four player co-op game. Yeah. But having five, are, are, are there always five when you're fighting people? Yeah. Well, no, cause sometimes, uh, Gamora will like go off and do her own thing. There are a lot of like, I think there's five here. Yeah. In this there's five here, right now. Okay. but there are parts like it flashes back to Peter's childhood mm -hmm. and you play as like a young Peter Quill, um, exploring like the farm he grew up on. So there's like parts where you're separated from the team or like the team goes right. off and does their own thing. Um, but for the most part, you know, it's the five of you like exploring like yeah. these planets. There are some, uh, some sections of the game where you do play, you get to fly the ship mm -hmm. and get to do space combat stuff. And that's cool. That like breaks things up a little bit, but those come like in between those come like few and far between, uh, the traditional. What is happening right now? All right. So this is a part of the game. <laughs> like when you're in a combat section, okay. if you're getting overwhelmed and you have enough, like, a, like I forget what bar it is. If it's filled up, you can bring the team in for a huddle and you can give them a pep talk. And at the end of the pep talk, Peter hits play on his uh, cassette player and they like fight to music. Okay. And that's where like the, the pop music soundtrack comes in. That sounds dumb. Is it dumb? It's it's the fun kind of dumb. Okay. Because like you get a boost and like you get to do combat to like I forgot what the hell's on the soundtrack. Like uh Kickstart My Heart by Motley Crue or like Tainted Love or songs like that. Okay. You know, like it's fun and like it's got enough of a variety of a soundtrack where like you don't hear the same song like twice in a row. Hmm. So that's cool. But again, that's like it's just a you know a rinse and repeat thing that you do because I feel like every time I was in a combat situation, I did have to do that. Okay, just so like to get through. It looks like you use uh, canned abilities from other characters. Like Groot will like hold them in place. Yeah, like you can command like Groot will hold them in place. Uh, Rocket has like his rocket launcher to attack. Gamora can. Um, quick cut the enemies and also too like their abilities also come into play with like exploration like drax can move heavy objects gamora can cut things down uh group can create bridges and stuff so it's all about like using the team to like get through the level okay. and like because you're star lord you're the leader so it's about you becoming the leader of this team okay whether they want you to be the leader or not did you beat it i did did you like it i did I don't know if I would necessarily recommend it though because it does get repetitive and because it is like it's a long game and I feel like it, it's easy to get burnt out by the end. It review I remember it reviewed well. I remember it sold well. Yeah, people well. liked it. James Gunn even said he liked it like okay. when he played it. So on PS5 it got an 80 on Metacritic. Yeah, I played PS5? the PS4. Yeah, they did a PS5 version. Oh, okay. I played the PS4 version. So like I <sighs> It's I know it's always on sale. So like if you see it for a good price, like check it out. Um or I think it's on I don't know if it's on Game Pass or PlayStation Plus or whatever. Um I have no idea. I would definitely say like it's definitely a try before you commit type of deal. Okay. That's that's what I have to say. I will not be playing it. Okay. Because uh looks like a B game and uh by now it's too far gone. <laughs> It, it is very much a B game. Unless I, I you think love the, Guardians. If you're, if you're big into Guardians, if you like the movies, maybe. It, it's definitely like a, a good Guardians experience. I just don't know if it's the Guardians experience mm -hmm. you want, you know? I understand. Yeah. Uh, and usually we say why we bought it, but you bought it and you played the whole thing. So I, I, think, I, got it as a, a I think I got it as a Christmas gift. Oh. Because I did want it. I did want to play it. And I liked it for a time. And then after a while, I was just like, doing this a lot <laughs> johnny rex in the chat says it was free on egs recently at the game, game store, store. oh okay. there you go there you go look, yeah, look so out for you... one of the put it on your wish list your steam wish list maybe it'd be a yeah. dollar one day i've been wish listing stuff oh have you yeah oh so was i and then you know what happened steam deck broke yeah hey guys thanks for watching <laughs> the backlog uh come to a podcast sometime yeah you know, uh see the rest of the show not just the backlog part but uh if you're just watching the backlog subscribe for more backlog and goodbye bye all right next news shut up okay breaking news f-zero maximum velocity for the gba is coming to the nintendo switch online oh. plus expansion pack march 29th i just saw it on twitter i couldn't find the nintendo tweet
the official Nintendo tweet. But we got a game coming if you're subscribed to Switch Online plus the expansion pass. There it is. F Zero Maximum Velocity. This is the Game Boy Advance, I believe. No, never mind. I thought this was the game based on the Saturday morning cartoon. It is not. That's GP Legends. We had what was it? Rush twenty forty nine or something? On the Game Boy Color. Oh. That game sucks. I get that confused with an F Zero game all the time. Yeah. I always think that's F Zero. It, it's like it tries to go for that vibe, I would say. Like the F Zero vibe. Yeah, no, it, it definitely does. Mm -hmm. Uh is this out now? No. Third twenty ninth. Yeah. So a couple days. Yeah. Cool. Uh maybe I'll try it for, yeah. for a hot minute. I would love to play the GameCube game. I I kick myself because I like I think the first year I went to too many games I saw it for twenty bucks and I didn't get it Ooh. and the next year it was shot up to like seventy. Yeah, you fucked up. All right, uh, let's talk about how the Pokemon Company is uh, back at it again. Nintendo yeah. is back at it again with well, some. It's specifically the Pokemon Company. According to a YouTuber, the Pokemon Company requested that YouTube remove a seven-year-old video showcasing modded Pokemon monsters in a Call of Duty Zombies match. On March 19th, as first spotted by IGN, Noah J456, a popular Call of Duty content creator who has over 5 million subscribers on YouTube. Yes. What the fuck are they on about? As first spotted by IGN, it's a tweet by the guy. <laughs> Why are we crediting IGN for finding a tweet? Maybe they were the first person to find the tweet. I don't know. I didn't he's write the got article. A, he's, people follow him. He's got a million followers. <laughs> it, 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 I hate, I hate like the, the, what do you call, what do you call it? They just, they, they just fucking like steal articles from each other. Right. Hate that. Kind of like what we're doing now. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yes, yeah, we don't credit them. <laughs> no, he, I'm going to read Noah J's tweet. Read Noah J's tweet. He says, uh, warning to all content creators, if your videos feature any sort of modded Pokemon content, I would delete slash unlisted ASAP. Just got a manual strike for a video I made seven years ago featuring Pokemon modded into Call of Duty Zombies. Two more strikes and my channel gets deleted. So it's a seven-year-old video. Yes. Uh, where literally just Pokemon are modded into Call of Duty yeah. Zombies. And here's a screenshot of him about to shoot a Pikachu in the face. Yeah. Um, so I got text messages about this asking if I had any uh, videos with modded Pokemon stuff. Uh -huh. And I'm sure I do in some of my videos. Maybe there's like a ROM of like a yeah. modded Pokemon game or something. But I don't have like explicitly like videos of gameplay uh -huh. this video's title is a new pokemon zombies so it's like the main focus of the video is that it's, uh -huh. a, it's a pokemon mod um and the big problem here is that it's a seven-year-old video and it's a strike so that means he's if he gets striked two more times his video his yeah. channel gets just completely deleted uh so that's why strikes are so terrible for mm -hmm. for youtubers uh famously point crow got uh they nintendo gave him two strikes they did it in a weird way where they kind of forced him to be like on probation on youtube so he yeah. couldn't live stream for a while and stuff and stuff like that they like they like fucked him to like as much as they could without getting his channel deleted right i think there needs to be something between a copyright claim and a copyright strike. Yeah. The copyright claim is the video stays up, but the copyright holder just takes all of the money, takes right. all the revenue. Or now they have like a little rev share situation. Mm -hmm. uh, copyright strike is the video gets deleted. There needs to be something where the video gets deleted and you don't have your channel in jeopardy. Because right. it's a fucking seven-year-old video. Yeah. There's no reason to put the whole channel in jeopardy. This whole system exists because there are people who upload whole movies. Yeah. And there are a lot of people who upload whole mm -hmm. movies, whole songs, whole TV shows, and try to claim all the revenue from it. So it's understandable why a system like this exists, but 
clearly this guy is not here to upload a whole Pokemon episode, right. you know? Like, yeah. So it, it's modded content. It's not even a Pokemon game. It's a, it's an Activision game. Yeah. Um, but the fact that there are Pokemon in it is what's causing the, the consternation. <laughs> yeah. So there, I don't like the way the system is working in this way. There, yeah. there needs to be a different route for a company like the Pokemon company to go. If they want their content taken down, that is not the same as if somebody uploaded a whole Pokemon right. episode. Yeah. Uh, so I, I don't know. I mean, look, there's nothing stopping companies like the Pokemon company from just taking any video down that even mentions Pokemon. Right. There's nothing stopping them at all. So, uh, you all right? I just noticed a scr uh, scratch on this. Let me see. Let me see your scratch. Any right brand there. new, very expensive. Thing. It, it refurbished. Let's not forget. Refurbished. That looks like uh, someone got caught in it. Yeah. Looks like a like the. Yeah. No problem. See, I'm, I fix things. Yeah, there you not go. Not your Steam Deck. <laughs> Nobody can fix that. See, if it was a Microsoft system, it just ran Xbox OS, <laughs> it would be fine. Griffinix says, can't they just DMCA the videos? No. Because that uh, would be a... Uh, like a... They would just claim the money from the video. Like yeah. that, that wouldn't take the video down. Uh, one creator, Toasted Chews, blames himself and his Power World X Pokemon mod video for causing the company to start cracking down. In January of this year, Toasted Chews uploaded a teaser of a mod that added Pokemon uh, to Power World, a survival game commonly referred to as Pokemon with guns. That video was soon taken down via a DMCA claim from Nintendo and the Pokemon company. Now some creators are worried that Nintendo and the Pokemon company are going scorched earth and will begin nuking even decades old videos. Um, from the internet and possibly cause some channels to be completely shut down. Yeah, I'm still waiting for the Power World lawsuit. Yeah. That's, I think, is still 100% happening. But yeah, Pokemon, we talked about it on the show. I think there was a Pokemon mod for Power World because, of course, there was. Yeah. And that got uh, swiftly deleted. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I don't know if they're the cause of it, but I mean, the Pokemon Company uh, and Nintendo. They're on YouTube. They're they're they got yeah. their eyes open. They're they're watching everything. They have to weigh whether or not it is important for the brand. Like like, is this content negatively affecting our brand? And if we take it down, how much bad PR are we gonna get? Oh, I don't think they care about bad PR at all. Well. I think that they're walking a line. Mm -hmm. uh, they overstep more than most people. But if they start taking down like reviews, like yeah. they're going to, everyone's going to be mad. Yeah. You know, like that would be like a gross overstep. Um, so I don't know. I, I mean, my content is in a, uh, it's always in jeopardy because right. like, I, I don't even really show straight up gameplay. Uh, gameplay can get DMCA'd or copyright right. struck all the time, but I don't really do that. I show like off camera stuff, but even that is still liable to the same sort of yeah. copyright. Um, but I do show ROMs, and that's yeah. of course uh, we already know that's a legal gray area, mm -hmm. or just straight up illegal sometimes. <laughs> and I have shown in in recent videos Pokemon ROM hacks. I got mm -hmm. a, an R four that I got came with Pokemon ROM hacks on. Uh, so. Any minute now, you know they yeah. could they could slam the 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 ban hammer. And the way that they'll do it is they'll take down a lot of them. They'll take down as many as they can before the channel gets deleted, or they'll just take them all down and the whole channel will get mm -hmm. deleted. Then I'll have to fight with a YouTube representative. Uh, so it's terrible out here, guys. Hope your job's yeah. safe. Anyway, uh, where are we at? Uh, no new notifications. Power World has 600 viewers at the moment. It's pretty much dead. I mean, it exploded and made millions and millions of dollars, and there was probably only like five people working on it. So uh, they're probably fine. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, they better have some of that money in the bank. 
for when they get yeah a, a swift boot. Uh, but that's not the only Pokemon DMCA. Oh, it's happened. not, huh? No. Uh, Pokemon fan game repository taken down uh, by DMCA. Relic Castle featured hundreds of fan-made Pokemon games. A Pokemon website which hosted links to fan-made Pokemon games has been official has been taken offline. Relic Castle, which was set up in 2014, consisted of a forum dedicated to the playing and creating of Pokemon fan games, as well as a directory providing access to hundreds of fan-made games. Uh, now, however, the site has been taken offline, with its owner blaming a reported DMCA takedown notice as the reason. Dear Pokemon fan game community, the message posted on the site's Twitter account reads, um, It is with heavy heart that I announce that Relic Castle um, has been taken down following a DMCA takedown notice. Uh, Relic Castle has always been a non-profit, ad-free, tight-knit community, and we pride ourselves in what Ooh. we have achieved. Members have felt at home, made friends, and even careers with us. Um, it is with deep regret that we have to inform you that uh, the form part of this community, which has turned 10 years old this year, has, has come to an end. With over 20,000 members and 65,000 posts, Relic Castle is home to many of us. The Discord server is not going anywhere, and the site is still visible as an archive using the Wayback Machine. Thank you for being with us uh, this last decade, and thank you for making Relic Castle as awesome and life-changing as it has been for some of us. You guys can't hear the alerts, right? I'm just realizing I don't mute them anymore. <laughs> That doesn't come up, right? That uh, would be very embarrassing. Yeah, it's not clear who issued the DMCA takedown notice or a specific reason uh, it gave, uh, and whether it included reasons beyond simply using Pokemon IP. Uh, earlier this month, uh, chief lawyer for the Pokemon company said in an interview that fan projects are more likely to get taken down if they get press coverage and start making money. Uh, we talked about that last week. So. One thing I find interesting is they say that they didn't make any money. Yeah. But uh, they even shared careers. I so. think that was... Um, I think that was more like, you know, started careers like in the gaming industry. Yeah. yeah. So I have a couple questions. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully they didn't make any money. Right. Uh, they said in this, in this statement that they weren't making any money. So that's good. Uh, I want to know how if any is anybody in the chat familiar with Relic Castle, the website. Does it run like Super Mario World Central? That's a this is a website uh that is for Mario ROM hacks, and the way this works is if you find a ROM hack, like I found one here that I want to try called We Like It Here. It's a newer ROM hack. I saw Pooh Bear was playing it. Uh, the way this works is you download a file. And you have to use this extension to take the file and patch your, your Super Mario World ROM. So the game doesn't actually have any Super Mario World content. I mean, the, the, the website doesn't have any Super Mario World content on it. Mm -hmm. It's just patching the ROM that you already got somewhere else. Right. I'm hoping that's how Relic Castle ran. Actually, I'm hoping that's not how Relic Castle right. ran because... That would make sense why they would get a DMCA because they're distributing right. copyrighted content. I, the way it should work is that it patches the game that you mm -hmm. already have so that everything can run in a legal capacity. Right. It provides you the full ROM complete and ready to go. Good. They should have been DMCA. <laughs> <laughs> the DMCA makes a lot of sense now. Right. Somebody's got to make a patcher, a ROM patcher. That That is so much... I mean, it's a little bit of a pain in the ass, but the ROM patcher is easy to use, and it makes it so that everything's above board. Right. I know there was a Pokemon ROM hack archive site, but I only went there once, says Griffinix. Uh, yeah. Uh, they, I mean, a lot of this stuff's going to be on archive.org anyway. Yeah. Archive.org, I think, had some trouble recently, but I think they're fine. Yeah, I, I think they're okay. I, I think they yeah. were like... People were... Uh, thinking they were going to be in trouble. Mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, guys, if you're going to have a fucking uh, ROM hack website, you got to have a patcher. You got to, if you're going to hack a ROM, create a patcher of some sort. I'm trying to look up because I remember there was, um, in 2016, there was uh, Pokemon Uranium, yeah. which is a fan game. It was made in RPG Maker. Uh, and that got taken down by nintendo 
um, after it had gotten like one and a half million downloads. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to see how like how that was distributed. If that was well, that's a whole Pokemon game made in a different engine, right? If they they probably had a Patreon or something. Okay. Um, same thing with like another Metroid Two remake. Yeah, like that's just <clears throat> straight up using the company's IP to to promote your game. Well, there was that one I forgot who said it, but they said if Nintendo is the Nintendo will go after you if they're planning on if you're making a fan game that is infringing on a game that they either have in development or they like continue to make money on. Like another Metroid Prime, another Metroid 2 remake was shut down because they were working on their own Samus Returns remake. Yeah. Well, last year, uh, last week, we talked about a lawyer for the Pokemon yes. company saying why Pokemon company would come after your fan mm -hmm. game. And here we're seeing it put into, put into practice. Yeah. Um, and he pr pretty much says, just don't make money off of it. If you yeah. don't make money off of it, we don't care. But in this case, they're literally distributing games that exist yeah. that are modified to some extent. Um, there is not much difference between having a fully made game in a fully different engine like Pokemon Uranium yeah. uh, that's just using the Pokemon IP and having a ROM hack that will patch the ROM that you already have. There's not uh -huh. much difference there. The only big difference that I can see is that Having a ROM that requires, or having a, a patch for a ROM that already exists means that you had to have acquired the game already. Mm -hmm. And that game needs to, you know, come from Nintendo. Quotes. Yeah. Uh, because you could just fucking download it. Mm -hmm. um, but it's super easy to get Game Boy and Game Boy Advance games yeah. uh, ripped to yourself. There's so many ways to do it, and it's so easy to do. <sighs> um, so that's something that I think is precious and needs to be protected. Yeah. Being able to rip your own ROM and patch it legally. Absolutely. Um, so I, I, I want to pursue, I want everybody as a community to pursue those angles <laughs> for the love of God. All right. Uh, is that it for Pokemon? Yes. All right. I want to, I want to talk really quickly about uh, Mario Maker. Okay game that i like a lot we might have talked about it on the show i don't remember uh the original mario maker for the wii u remember her yes uh, it got uh shut down sometime last year yes it they said that you cannot upload levels anymore mm -hmm. but you can still play levels that were already uploaded yes however in a year's time they would remove the ability to play levels that are online. Yes. So the servers would shut down completely. Mm -hmm. So some people, they called themselves Team 0%, decided, hey, let's beat every level that exists in Mario yeah. Maker. At the time, there was something like 20,000 unbeaten levels. Mm -hmm. That means if they're unbeaten, that means they're probably pretty hard. That right. means a, major a, a decent amount of them are probably pretty hard. Uh, so they set out to play every single, to play and beat every single one. Uh, last we checked, which was like two weeks ago, there were like 20 levels left. Mm -hmm. Last week, there was one level left. Yes. It was called Trimming the Herbs. And uh, I saw, I was watching Little Curbs uh, playing it. And, and it looks fucking impossible. Right. It's less than 20 seconds long. There's a lot of shit you got to do. Yeah. And it looked really, really hard. And it turns out, it looked like it was really hard. Because it was uploaded by a TAS, a tool assistant right. speed run, they call it. Uh, it was tool assisted. So a human never beat the level. Usually right. in Mario Maker, you have to beat the level in order to upload it. The person who built the level used a computer to play through the level to upload it. So he cheated, basically. Uh, and he came out and he straight up said that that's what happened. Uh, the user was Ahoyo. Uh, this is very long, but basically uh, he decided he didn't want to say anything because he wanted to kind of see, he was kind of trolling a little bit. He kind of right. wanted to see people try to beat the level because mm -hmm. he thought that they could actually do it, but it was taking people a really long time to do it. So uh, he finally was like, listen, uh, I admit I, I, I used a tool, I, I used a tool to, to right. get it to work. I don't really understand how the tool works because like I have controllers that have macro functionality yeah. and they don't really 
they're not accurate enough to upload a whole yeah. Mario level. So I don't really know how you would like hook up uh um uh uh you're basically hooking a computer up to a Wii U and getting yeah. a computer to play oh, the game. Yeah. Um so anyway, this guy I think had uh dexterity issues and he wasn't able to play Mario Maker to the same uh capability that he once was. He, yeah. He's like notorious for making really hard levels and his dexterity kind of deteriorated for whatever reason. So somebody developed a task and he was like, oh wait, I can use this to still make really hard levels. But turns out he made one that was a little too hard mm -hmm. and probably should, uh, it might be impossible to beat. Yeah. Um, little curbs is still trying to beat it. Right. But, uh, I think he's still going at it. I haven't, I haven't heard anything about it. Um, but this is the most anticlimactic end I could possibly <laughs> see. Because for a week, there was one level left. Yeah. And instead of getting the level beaten, they just decided, ah, this last level doesn't count. <laughs> We're done. <laughs> that is, that does kind of suck. Yeah. yeah. So it's also unfortunate that, like, uh, you know, my completionist brain is li like wants all of the levels to have a one next to yeah. like, like somebody beat the level. You know, yeah, every yeah. level needs to be beaten. Yeah. Uh, but they're just not including some levels mm -hmm. like like this one, for example. I think a task did beat the level, so I think it does say that there is one level like one beaten. Yeah. I think by April, even the ones that are tool assisted will probably have other people who use tools. Yeah. To beat the level. But I think we're done. I, th I think every Mario Maker level has been beaten, even okay. though we're not. We still have like two weeks or so left till uh, the ser servers yeah. are completely shut down. Uh, so. But the last level that was actually counted was beaten. Yeah. Yeah. It was called The Last Dance. Yeah. 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 But that sucks because that was beaten <laughs> like a week and a half before. This level. Right. Oh, this is this is the actual last level. This is the last day. Yeah, I was watching that on the in that, it's on that tweet, yeah. Very long. Yeah. And there's a whole lot of shit you gotta do. The other level was very short, which is weird that it wasn't able to be beaten. Mm. But again, Little Curbs is still gonna keep trying to beat it because right. he was very close. And he was able to do it, uh, just not all in one go. He yeah. had to do it in like chunks. All right. Uh what else? do we got here we have a recap of epic's state of unreal from gdc 2024 okay a lot of interesting things uh on the player side of things the big attraction of the event was no doubt the first look at the new marvel game from skydance new media and amy henning uh titled marvel 1943 rise of hydra set in world war ii the narrative driven action game uh stars captain america and black panther a uh, heading went on Henning was on hand uh, to not only introduce the game, but also show off the new Unreal Engine effects featured in the game, like uh, like a nanite adaptive uh, tessellation feature that allows developers to later tile texture and use shader logic to create complex environment uh, effects like footprints or tire tracks in real time with minimal, uh, minimal use of geometry. She also called to attention the new a heterogeneous particle effects showing off the fire in a barrel and noting how the flames were illuminating the resulting plumes of smoke, which were itself a casting shadows on the environment uh, themselves. Uh, those aren't the only additions to Unreal Engine as Epic VP of Engineering Simon uh, Tornagu, sure, uh, laid out a number of new rendering technologies incorporated into about, uh, about to ship Unreal Engine 5.4, including... Um, motion matching technology to smooth transitions between character animations. The feature has been in use in Fortnite since December and Epic is marketing its addition to Unreal Engine uh, by releasing an assortment of 500 plus motion captured animations uh, compatible with the MetaHuman rig free for all Unreal developers. Attendees also received a look at three games with an emphasis on various Unreal Engine features. Uh, such as Funcom's Dune Awakening, Zynga's Star Wars Hunters, and Chrono Studios' uh, MMO Chrono Odyssey. Epic Game Store GM Steve Allison 
gave a brief update on plans for a mobile launch of the Epic Games Store, saying the company is targeting iOS and Android launches by the end of the year. I thought they were already going for that. They are. They're just, they confirmed that it's coming to iOS and Android this year. Oh, I thought it was like, ow. No, no, okay. not yet. Uh, in, in addition to Epic's own games, the mobile game store uh, will have a selection of third-party partners who have expressed interest in joining the storefronts at launch. And Allison also said that existing uh, programs like the Epic First Run program that give up the platform's revenue share for a time of exclusivity will be available on mobile as well. The last segment of the show was focused on new additions to Unreal Editor for Fortnite, uh, like a much-requested first-person camera view and the addition of features from the LEGO Fortnite physics and destruction engine. Uh, Epic is also adding Fall Guys and Rocket League assets, animation templates, and devices to the editor so creators uh, can build experiences inspired by those games within oh, that's the cool. Unreal Editor for Fortnite. That's cool. Yeah. That basically, so then you can make Fall Guys that isn't janky. Yeah. That's kind of really Fall cool. Guys that works. Yeah. yeah. Imagine Fall Guys, but you play as a Fortnite character yeah. and you jump like a Fortnite character. Yeah. That could be cool. So yeah, a lot of uh, interesting things out of the the, app, the state of Unreal. The main things being the reveal of the Marvel game that Amy Henning has been working on mm -hmm. and um, the Epic Game Store coming to iOS and Android. Okay. So those are the big ones. The uh, trailer for the Marvel game looks pretty cool. It does look really good. Yeah. Uh, I think because it's Amy Henning and she did the Uncharted games. So like there's experience with that. So I... I feel like it's more of a type of game, Marvel game I would want to play as mm -hmm. opposed to like the Square Enix ones. Yeah, um, no, definitely. Yeah. Uh, I feel like I need to open up Fortnite and see if there's some uh, some games I want to try. I'm like always some games tempted to like trying. play Fortnite. But see, like... I like the idea of uh, what I'm hearing from Roblox. Yeah. Like how people are making games within Roblox, but it seems too complicated. Yeah. And I know that Fortnite isn't as complicated. Right. I can wrap my head around Fortnite a little more. Right. But like, I'm the type of guy, like I, I just want to play regular ass Fortnite. I don't want to do any of this other stuff, you know? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't like the base. Maybe, Fortnite game. maybe play like the rock band stuff in it. I did see like the riff master went on sale and I'm like, I don't want to spend $130 on the guitar, but I yeah, I to. would also like to see how that works. Yeah. Cause I don't think the Fortnite festival is yeah. it called. I don't think it works with controllers yet at all. Okay. Like the riff master was made for it. Right. But I don't think it works with, X input controllers yet, and I think okay. that's the whole. Yeah. The Rift Master is an X input controller, yeah. and it will eventually work with it. Whatever. Um. So I don't know. I don't know how that works. Um. Yeah, I want to see a list of like games that were made using the Fortnite engine. Uh, and yeah. I want to see if there's anything cool there. Sonic Speed Simulator on Roblox is made by Sega and is super fun. I've heard that's good. I, I yeah. heard about that. You can use regular controllers, but it's only two directions on the D-pad and two buttons. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. All right. Uh, we are now on to... Oh, DJ Skeletor, thank you for the five gifted subs. Uh, GTA 6 is not going to be optimized. No. Uh, where is it? Uh, the leaked PS5 Pro specs have been verified and added... Uh, to by the tech experts at Digital Foundry, who also delivered their prediction on how the unannounced console will run GTA 6. This week, the PS5 Pro specs leaked, uh, also verified by IGN, revealed the power of the console where Sony reportedly plans to release during the fourth quarter of this year. The PS5 Pro CPU is said to be identical to the standard PS5 CPU, but with a high CPU frequency mode, which amounts to a 10% increase to 3.8 gigahertz. Um, there's going to be no fucking difference yeah, between no. these two consoles. The GPU <laughs> enables faster rendering and higher uh, quality ray tracing powered by 33.5 teraflops. Standard PS5 uh, offers 10.28 teraflops. However, a direct PS5 to PS5 Pro comparison would work out uh, to around 10.28 versus 16 to 17 teraflops. The release of the PS5 Pro is thought to be particularly enticing in the context of 
next year's GTA 6, which is set to boost the video game market beyond developer Rockstar Games and parent company uh, Take Two. But according to Digital Fa Foundry uh, founder Rich Ledbetter, speaking in the latest episode of DF Direct, the PS5 Pro CPU means GTA 6 will probably run at 30 frames per second, assuming GTA 6 runs at 30 frames per second on the standard PS5. Given no GTA game has launched with a 60 frames per second option, this one seems nailed on. According to Ledbetter, if GTA 6 runs at 30 frames per second on the PS5, it'll run at 30 frames per second on the PS5 Pro, barring some kind of programming miracle. Because the CPU handles simulation, and the PS5 Pro CPU only increases performance by 10%. And in the unlikely event that GTA 6 has a 60 frames mode on the PS5, it'll run at 60 frames per second on PS5 Pro. While the PS5 Pro CPU looks like a modest improvement, the PS5 Pro is much better than the PS5 and rendering, according to Digital Foundry. PS5 Pro uh, Digital Foundry predicts uh, is capable of upscaling 1080p older PS5 games to 4K um, via its PlayStation spectra uh, Spectral Super Resolution upscaling if the developer chooses to support it. I mean... PlayStation has had performance modes in the past where like, uh, yeah. like Spider-Man, for example, 1080p but it but it runs at 60. Runs at 60. Yeah. Uh I wouldn't be surprised if uh Grand Theft Auto 6 had a similar option. I just don't know what is going to be different with a pro version. Yeah. I don't think much of anything at all. No, I don't think so either. I think you know, maybe like the resolution will be clearer, but yeah, I don't I again, like we talked about this before, I don't know what a PS5 Pro can offer people. I guess first party games are going to need to have some sort of change with yeah. a pro version that makes it worth getting a pro version. But uh Rockstar has no obligation to fulfill some weird PS5 Pro spec. No. 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 No, they're they're making the game for this for what's available right now. It's like when they did GTA 5, they made those for PS3 and Xbox 360 the year that the Xbox 1 and the PS4 came out. Yeah, they got to stop with that. <laughs> or Hopefully now there'll be a better path for upgrading in yeah. the future because the biggest thing I, I could I there was potential for me to be a huge fan of Grand Theft Auto Five Online yeah because there's a so much shit to do with Grand yeah. Theft Auto Five Online a lot of stuff looks really cool but I never got to do it because I got Grand Theft Auto Five played the whole game right when I was about to finally get online they re-released the game for the next generation and all my friends bought it on the next generation. Right. I was like, I just beat it and have all of this shit because yeah. I beat it. I don't want to buy the game again. Yeah. And then, and then I start from nothing again. And things didn't transfer over as yeah. easily back then if they did at all. So. Yeah. I think there was a way, but uh, yeah. it wasn't Im immediately clear to me how, mm -hmm. to, how to do it. No. So um, I, ga I, I completely gave up. I was like, fuck this. I'm yeah. not playing this stupid game again. Now, two generations later, people are still playing that game. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. I mean, we're at the end of the life cycle, so that sucks. But hopefully, we'll be able to transfer things <laughs> yeah. uh, easily. There's no word on a PC version of this game. No. Which also would have been really cool. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's like the, uh, GTA Five. They didn't release the PC version until years later. Yeah, Rockstar so. doesn't like PC versions. No, because no, they, they put their games on real video game sets. Check out the role-playing servers for modded GTA Five. No. I've seen people stream it and stuff. Yeah. That's, I'm not interested in that. I like the cool, like, you know how you see people's, like, TikToks on the lower, it'll be like a podcast, and then on the lower part, it's like Grand Theft Auto, like, racing yeah, on, like, weird yeah. ramps. I like that shit. Yeah. The racing on the weird ramps. Like, oh. I would play that. Yeah. Those look fun. All right. Uh, next news we got, oh, Grand Theft Auto Five is also not coming out. <laughs> yeah, GTA 6 could be delayed till next year per Kotaku. Uh, just days after a report service in which multiple Rockstar developers expressed concern about the company's return to office mandate and its potential effects on the sequel, Kotaku reports that production has fallen behind and could lead to a substantial delay. According to the report, the current plan internally is still to release GTA 6 in early 2025, but it's becoming more and more likely that a delay will push it into late 2025 or early 2026. It isn't precisely clear from the reporting why production is falling behind, 
but it's enough to give Rockstar some worry about hitting the spring 2025 target. It said that fall 2025 release date is now more plausible and feasible. Additionally, this production setback is reportedly a big reason Rockstar is pushing its employees to return to in-office work in the final stretch of GTA 6 development. It's worth noting anecdotally and according to Kotaku that Rockstar is known to wait until the last minute to make changes or alter plans and then of course uh and then of course it takes time to coordinate with PR and communication teams on an announcement and timing so even if they uh, even if we get a new trailer reiterating the announced um 2025 release window uh there's no real assurance uh that GTA 6 won't be delayed further down the road Meanwhile, Rockstar developers who typically don't make the decisions to change release dates are worried that the mandatory return to office will cause employees who, who are unable or unwilling to leave remote work to simply quit and throw more hurdles in the road. Yeah, I'm not surprised at all. The It's kind of known that like the past few GTA games like basically didn't come together until like the last year. And a lot of that actually had to do with... um like a guy named Leslie Benzie who worked at Rockstar who like kind of helped uh Sam and Dan Hauser and the rest of Rockstar like find the game's rhythm and like steer it in the direction it needed to be in for a release. Leslie Benzie doesn't work at Rockstar anymore. A lot of people who like used to work at, on the GT games don't work there anymore. So I'm not believing this game until I see some gameplay. Yeah. We still haven't even seen gameplay. Yeah. So right now it says early 2025 but it looks like it might. I doubt it's going to be, be early late. 2025. Yeah, it's not hitting early 2025 no. for sure. Late 2025 sounds more reasonable, but yeah. this article is saying it could even be 2026. I mean, I hope not. This is the game that's supposed to save the entire industry. <laughs> I don't know if we could go another year without. This year's pretty bad. Yeah. This year, not a lot of games. Yeah. Guys, what's a game I should be excited about this year? I'm trying to write a video on all the games coming out this year. Yeah. So tell me. I mean, I'm currently playing Dishonored 2, which came out like. A thousand years ago mm -hmm. so what does that tell you it, it it helps if there's a steam demo because i think yeah. i'm gonna only talk about games that have steam demos right now anyway uh while you conjure up some games for me to play uh will smith couldn't save zombie survival game undawn no the will smith fronted zombie survival game undawn bombed remember undawned yeah uh R routers said sorry reuters said undawn which it described as a key in-house developed game from tencent flopped spectacularly despite being endorsed by hollywood star will smith and with an alleged budget of close to a billion yawn around 140 million dollars uh, sources told the publication undawn had more than 300 developers pc and mobile game undawn launched in june too much fan for fanfare that revolves around the digital recreation of Will Smith in game. The Oscar winning actor plays Trey Jones, who acts as a guide to help players navigate the world uh, four years after a global disaster. But even Will Smith, even Big Willie style himself, couldn't save Undawn from failing to move the needle for a 10 cent. According to Reuters, uh, quoting research firm uh, At Magic, Undawn brought in revenue of just. 287,000 last month. IGN has asked Tencent for a comment. The failure of Undawn is one of the many reasons for a strategic shift at Tencent that has also resulted in a potential delay of the mobile game Assassin's Creed Jade. Tencent is said to be focusing on casual party games and games like Genshin Impact while moving away from working on mobile versions of Western IP. I Donkey has a video on this I want to watch because yeah. I don't know anything other than I see Will Smith's big face. That I think that's the, uh, the, that's the joke. Nobody knows anything about this game. And that all of a sudden it was, it's a disaster. It was, I didn't you know, even know it was coming out. I yeah. had no idea Will no, Smith was going to I don't remember this game. I don't remember the announcement of a Will Smith-backed game. Mm -hmm. um, it, apparently it came out and it didn't move the needle. And surprise, it was a failure. <laughs> uh, anyway, games I'm, uh, people say I should be playing this year. Uh, Sir Griffith. Uh, says Boltaro. That's people uh, are that's like the game things. right now. Yeah, doesn't have a Steam demo though. Uh, George McFarlane says the Plucky Squire. That is another one that I'm excited for. I just put it on my wish list. Um, also doesn't have a demo though. Yeah. Uh, but I might give Boltaro, Balta, Bal Balatro. Balatro. I might give yeah. Balatro. Uh, things about. I mean, Helldivers 2 is like also like the big game right now. Yeah, I've been playing that. It's yeah. awesome. There's that. Yeah. Um, someone. Oh, I, just, I did big, see big Helldivers 2 fan. Yeah. I saw. 
I just lost it. Someone in the chat. Oh, pretty... Stella, Stella Blade. Then now does that have a demo? I don't think so. It did for a hot second. Princess Peach had a demo. Princess Peach looks like fresh. <laughs> I have a I have a decent list of of games. Yeah. Is Stellar Blade PS5 only? It might be. I thought it was coming for Steam. No. Stellar Blade console game. Sand yeah, PS5 has a demo. Yeah, it's okay. That's okay. Uh, Sandland. Okay, I gotta, I gotta check out Sand. They they had a booth at PAX. Okay. I uh did not even, I didn't even look at it. Mm -hmm. No, I did look at it. I think E got some footage of it. I uh wasn't too interested. Uh, maybe I'll maybe I'll put this video. Uh. I'll put this on my wish list right now. Anyway, plow through the rest of this. We got Resident Evil 9. Resident Evil 9 could be an open world game. Uh, according to Twitter user Dust Golem, who has a long track record of reporting information about video games before they've been made public, Resident Evil 9 is being developed as an open world game. Dragon's Dogma 2 expanded uh, RE Engine's functionality for open world games. Um, the two other games building on this tech are Monster Hunter Wild and Resident Evil 9. Um, while Resident Evil Village allowed players to traverse uh, between several large semi-open areas, the main series is yet to experiment with a fully open world. Monster Hunter Wild, the sequel to Monster Hunter World, uh, was announced in December of 2023. The game is set for release in 2025, although Capcom has shared a few details about the game. Uh, Capcom has yet to publicly announce the next mainline entry in the Resident Evil series, nor has it announced uh, the next of its remakes. I got to get through uh, Resident Evil 8. I need to start Resident Evil 8. I started on my phone. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Any good? Pretty good. Yeah. Just don't use touch controls. Got it. And now you can play it on your Yeah, Netflix. look at that. It actually runs ga games that are for yeah. the, 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 the M chip, the yeah. Apple Silicon, run awesome. Yeah. That's good. And a surprising amount of my Steam games just worked. Oh. Oh. This Man, guy's I'm got back, all my baby. Steam games. <laughs> all right, last news, Alpha Protocol. Who gives a fuck? I don't know. I'm sick of these people who are all excited about Alpha Protocol. Where were you 20 year, 10, 15 years ago? The ambitious yet flawed <laughs> Alpha Protocol is available for prices once again. The 2010 game, which was developed by Obsidian Entertainment and published by Sega, was removed from all platforms in 2019 because Sega's music licensing rights had expired. The game is uh, making a comeback as a DRM-free exclusive on GOG, available for $20 with an initial 10% off um, lasting through April 3rd. Uh, while it's now available in a definitive edition of sorts containing all of the original music as well as support for modern wireless controllers, text localization support for eight languages, Windows 10 and 11 compatibility, cloud safe support. The game also supports achievements on GOG, uh, which were previously only available on console. What this re-release of Valve Protocol is not, however, is a remaster. The visuals and core game are unchanged. GOG produced a mini documentary on how it uh, brought the game back and uh, embedded in the post below. Here's, who, who, here's the thing. Hold on. You shut up. Who's this guy? Oh, not that guy. Oh, this is longer than I thought. <laughs> there was just a random guy with long hair who just staring at the screen. I'm never gonna find okay. it again. What what's the thing? Here's Tell me the, the thing. Here's the thing. We talk about we've been talking about games getting delisted a lot. And Alpha Protocol is a game that, you know, it didn't have this guy. Him. He's just looking. <laughs> he's just he's just in the middle of the trailer. He's fat. He's sad that Alpha Protocol got taken down. Right. Alpha Protocol is a game. It wasn't a big hit back in the day. No. It, it got. A it was. People were so disappointed. People were but mad. It has a substantial cult following. People actually do enjoy this game, despite the fact that it runs like shit, because it has a a good story, a unique a dialogue system, uh, to it that actually like affects gameplay in a time when that didn't really happen. Mm -hmm. um, and it's it's a full on, it's an RPG set in a a semi modern spy setting espionage setting when almost every R RPG is either sci fi or fantasy, so it's it's a unique game that has a dedicated fan base that is worth checking out. But because it used a song like an actual like a pop music song that the license ran out and it got taken down. Yeah, and 
you know, we've been talking about games being delisted and never returning, becoming harder to play. And now all of a sudden it's back. This is news because this is a good no, sign I, for other games that get delisted for stupid fucking I reasons. I agree with all of that. And it's great to see games come back. It doesn't need to be a fucking remaster. No, and it, it, it's not. The only thing they really added were achievements and modern control support. My issue is with all the people all of a sudden acting like they've always loved Alpha Protocol. <laughs> You know when this when it first announced that like it got like taken down. You know what I did? I bought Alpha Protocol on PS3, so I have it. And if it's one of those games I've been wanting to play, you bought it when it got taken down. Yeah, we were at. I forgot what convention we were at because it got taken down in 2019. Oh, I saw you Alpha it Pro physically. Yeah, oh, I, yeah, just to have because what if I want to play it? Nice. I also have it in my Steam collection when it got taken down. And if I want to play it, I, at least I have access to it. So. But you'll never play. I'll never play. This it. game's probably not good. It's apparently it's not. But like I want to see. That's the thing though. Like it's good to have access to games, even though like they may be like glitchy or broken. Yeah, because it might offer unique experiences that because like like I said, people like this game. I Friend like of the that, show, Kevin Kenson, loves this game. I like that it's available. Yeah, I like that it's available. Anywhere he goes. Quit of the week. Quit of the week. Quit of the week. This is from Colombo Screenshots. That smells like beef. Is that beef? Uh, that's it. That's the is Colombo like popular with the kids, or no. are these just like they old? don't know who he is? Are these just olds? Like you know who loves Colombo? Pasini, big time Colombo guy. He, he looks like he'd be a Colombo guy. He looks like he's forty-seven. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna talk to you guys. Yes. Starting off with people who left comments on last week's Wolf Den Podcast over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. Yeah, we got Paul Be Beery over on the YouTube channel in the comments saying, as a 40-year-old man, I really appreciate you guys stumbling through the specs of the PS5 Pro. I felt seen. I keep seeing stuff being talked about. There's even, I saw somebody talking about a new handheld that's coming out. Yeah. And they were going through like specs and benchmarks. And I still, all of a sudden, I'm seeing all these terms that I don't understand again. It all, this all just started happening within the last month or <laughs> last couple of weeks. All right. of a sudden, there's all these specs that I've never heard of before. Right. Getting, getting thrown around. <sighs> specs, like, are the worst part of tech. I'm fine with it. I'm fine. I'm, I'm usually able to navigate the right. specs. But now, all of a sudden. They, they just keep adding things for you to know. Like, it's yeah. not just, like, it's not good enough to, you know, CPU, GPU, RAM, storage space. To know, like, all the ins and outs of the CPU, all the ins and outs of the GPU. The 20 different versions of RAM that there is. Yeah. And, and something that... Uh, and then none of them have easy to navigate names. None no. of them are, like, you know, basic basic English. It's all, like, alphabet soup and letter soup. Yeah. You know? I will say that... Uh, a lot of consumers fall for the the specs right uh the, the having a list of specs higher number equals better thing yeah and that has uh not always been true and that's when i try to review a new product or something i try to be like here's the specs but here's how it actually feels like does right. it actually feel like the specs are doing anything cuz that's important i saw somehow i got on the oled subreddit <laughs> i don't know how the fuck it just threw me there right um but people were like bitching about a uh, a new monitor a new oled monitor that has like a super high refresh rate right uh and they were like uh it's got a matte screen what fucking garbage. And pe people are like, this guy says that the mats, and I did this too in my video yeah. on the OLED Steam Deck. This guy says that the matte screen looks better. Show me a stat where it actually does look better. And it's like, why do I need to quantify how it looks better? It yeah. just looks better. I don't, like, because technically a matte screen has a less deep black. Right. I don't care. Reflections aren't as reflective, yeah. so it looks nicer. Not everything needs to be quantifiable. Yeah. You know? No, I agree. Sometimes it just feels good. Yeah. Uh, e e e e e e e e 
whatever your name is, says, did you guys not read the Star Wars books? Here's a fun fact. Nobody reads Star Wars books. <laughs> Nobody reads Star Wars books. And if they told books. you they did, they read the Wikipedia and they're liars no, and don't be friends with the them. they read the Wikipedia. Yes. Yes. That's, that's just the accepted fact. I have read one Star Wars book in my life. It was Shadows of the Empire. I own six of them. I read half of one, yeah. and maybe it was Shadows of the Empire. Probably Shadows of the Empire. Because I was like, oh, the game's so good. And then I read the book, and I was like, I don't like reading. Yeah. So that's the secret about Star Wars books. Everybody says they've read Star Wars books. Nobody has read Star Wars books. No. They all just read the Wikipedia Comics, articles. though. Comics. Different. D different. I'm currently reading the mainline Star Wars comic uh, um, at Marvel. I don't like it. I'm still reading it. Okay. <laughs> Not ten, not an RPG guy says during the Xbox podcast when Phil Spencer said they were working on a system that was going to be quote the biggest leap in gaming ever. They also confirmed another console releasing this holiday. Do you think that if PlayStation and Xbox both release hardware this holiday that it could negatively affect the Switch 2's launch, which is rumored for March 2025? No, no. Um, I mean, I know that people have limited resources and buying two consoles would be rough for people mm -hmm. so i don't want to say it won't affect it at all but i think the effects would be negligible i i think that it uh if a switch 2 is similar to the switch 1 but just better in a lot of aspects i think it will be massively successful no matter what yeah i think uh you know this i think the switch 2 is like such a different audience than what xbox and playstation are going to do because it sounds like xbox and playstation are going to either the release pro versions or iterative versions of their current consoles like it, we're the ps5 pro or the discless xbox series that's what's weirding me out is that microsoft seems like they want to release a whole new console right but they're also approaching this like console generations aren't the same anymore Right, you know, games kind of transcend console generations right. now. So Microsoft seems to be approaching it like it's a whole new experience, and PlayStation seems to be like this is the five, but better. Right, you know. Well, it sounds like you know Microsoft and PlayStation are just like releasing a different version of the same thing, whereas Nintendo is releasing the next thing. Yeah, and but, I think people would much rather have the next thing than the same thing. But I'm arguing that I think Microsoft is looking at it differently like no, yeah i agree this but, is a whole new experience but but they don't have a hard cutoff like right. like uh nintendo might have a harder cutoff yeah but like whatever microsoft is going to release this year is not going to be substantially different from what they released in 2020 I don't uh think. yeah uh, yeah yeah it's not going to be like a playstation 6 but i think yeah. it'll be close i think it'll be i don't know it'll be I, I just think that every year console generations are getting not uh, not so different yeah, every the, the, Switch Two will be drastically different than right. Switch One, and like every like, yeah, this console rate, console generation is already substantially different from every other, and like they just the lines keep getting blurred and blurred and yeah. blurred between. Night Weather says, I think the pro versions are mainly just to get frame rate higher, but I agree, it's still kind of pointless. Yeah, no, yeah. that yeah, I mean, it's really just to get people to buy more PlayStation stuff. They, they want you to buy the same thing twice. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And I will. Right. And I won't be happy about I it. I won't. Because... I don't want it. I mean, I didn't get the Slim. I was... Right. I should have gotten the Slim to make a video on, mm -hmm. and I didn't, because I... What am I going to say? Yeah. It's the, it's the same. <laughs> I mean, I could, I could squeeze a 10-minute right. video out of it. But, uh... There's a lot more to say if there's a pro because there's right. specs to talk about. Oh boy. <laughs> Burlote says, I like Star Wars, all Star Wars. I like you guys too. Thanks, man. Yeah. And now we're in the chat where uh, Lorian says, My librarian heart hurts, but I'm happy you're reading comics, LOL. <laughs> hey, they have comics at my local library all over the place too they got like the young adult comics they got the kid comics they got the mainstream comics they're all over the place so you have they have comics in the library comics are books deal with it hey jack says did you order a mig switch if not i wouldn't mind you loaning mine if you were interested in covering it still waiting for the dumper to show up <laughs> but have the card uh i would take you up on that if you had the dumper because i don't want to 
talk about the switch the mig switch without the dumper if i get the mig switch i might wait for the dumper to show up i'm gonna do the whole thing without cracking <laughs> up very proud of myself here no thank you but uh yeah. i i i'm gonna wait for the dumper i don't know where mine is uh and i'm get, starting to get mad <laughs> starting to get really mad right uh edward boba Thoughts on Sega Atlas Leaker saying that Sonic Heroes remake is being considered, but is not a given. Um, I don't think anybody wants that. <laughs> Did P- I don't know if people actually like like Sonic they, Heroes. They have to make an Adventure Three at some point. They have to do Adventure Three. I don't know because like it, they're so weird with the way 3D Sonic is. Like they they land on something that works, and then they're like, "No, we got to do something different." They land on something that works, and then they go, how do we fuck this up yeah, as, exactly. as much as possible? Yeah. I think Frontiers is their like blueprint for the next Sonic game, and I hope they stick to it because I think that Frontiers 2 is going to be great, but I fear like they're not going to stick to it. They're going to fuck it up somehow. I don't like, like, the, I don't like the, whole, the hub world. What? I just want the levels. Do you know, levels. I like the hub world, though. I, I like, like the, I the, like the feeling of zen I have just like rolling around the hub world i just wanted to get to the next thing and i didn't my hand wasn't held enough (laughs) uh the leaker added that there will not be sonic adventure remakes only heroes fuck (laughs) well (laughs) heroes hasn't in fairness has not been re-released ever it's stuck on the gamecube ps2 and original xbox so like i'm surprised they never like ported over but like again like i don't know like i remember heroes being well reviewed back in the day i remember I people were dis. i remember me specifically being disappointed that it was yeah wasn't like, like people actually got their adventure. hands on it they like they didn't like it but i know like there are people who do like it oh that's all did you guys see game pass added more keyboard and mouse support yes i did what does that. that even mean uh you can play games with keyboard and mouse now you couldn't yeah before uh, for some games i guess on pc yeah I, did, I had no idea. I just figured it was the PC version of the game. I don't know, man. I'm very I confused. Don't, I don't do... I'm not a game passer. I mean, a remaster of their most successful game, Sonic Adventure 2, especially with the movie hype, would be amazing. I mean... <sighs> not much remaster you could do. Yeah. With that. I mean, like, what, what could you do with the game? It's, it kind of is what it is. Yeah. Keyboard and mouse support for cloud. It was cloud only. Uh, uh oh. So you oh oh. So how does that work? Are you playing the Xbox version of the game with a keyboard and mouse? I guess so. As if you have a keyboard and mouse plugged into an Xbox, yeah. or are you playing the PC version of the game? I'm very confused. Bob, how did you like this year's PAX East? I liked it a lot. I enjoyed it. Uh, it w- didn't have that many exciting games uh which is a little disappointing i think i think a lot of people pulled out because they didn't have money to spend on on the right. event you needed a controller for cloud before interesting i'm very conf- i'm very confused it always complained to me when i try to launch a cloud game on game pass ultimate now i want to like plug my phone into a keyboard and mouse and, <laughs> and try to cloud into Wait, can I do that on my MacBook now? Xbox Insiders can now test out mouse and keyboard support for Xbox Cloud Gaming. Uh, f- can I cloud game Valorant? I don't see why not. That'd be well. It's because it's probably not on. Game yeah. Game. Valorant has Game Pass support. Like if you have Game Pass and you link it to your Valorant account, you get yeah. all the characters that you usually have to pay for. Microsoft revealed the list of games that currently support mouse and keyboard on the service, uh, with the caveat that some may encounter um, some issues, uh, including Fortnite, uh, Ark Survival Evolved, Sea of Thieves, Grounded, Halo Infinite, Atomic Heart, uh, Sniper Elite 5, Deep Rock Galactic, High on Life, Zombie Army 4, Gears Tactics, Pentiment, Doom 64, and Age of Empires 2. So, you can cloud stream on your Mac through Safari. Yes, that's not as fun. Kind of want to try that. See what I can, see what I can do there. Uh, I want the Xbox Store on PC so I can buy the game once and play it on my Xbox with the console experience and also on the PC as well natively. 
fully transferable library. Yeah, right now yeah. it's it's a little murky, but it seems like they want to unify it. Yeah. So uh, that would be nice. All right. Uh, what else? Funny, I did plug my mouse into my phone today, and it worked pretty darn well. You know what I'm trying to do right now? My my new project is gonna be um. You know how I have that Android phone as like a backup phone? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to plug that into my router as a backup internet connection. So if my internet... Because Verizon just drops out. Right. And like the okay. middle of the night, it'll just drop out. Okay. And then come back. And it's fucking annoying. So I'm going to have a backup... Because my router supports a backup. Okay. So if one drops out, the other everything will just switch to the other one. Okay. It'll be shitty and slow, uh -huh. but at least I won't completely disconnect from things, you know? Okay. So like how does it how how do you turn a phone into like a backup? Network? That's what I'm trying to figure out. So it you would have to pull it from like uh cell service, no? Yeah, or? cell service. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But so it would be a phone that's sitting next to my router that has an Ethernet dongle plugged into right. it. And an Ethernet <laughs> dongle is plugged into the router. Okay. So that's the that's the my next project. Okay. I was looking into uh like cheap internet plans for the yeah. house so I can get a second internet plan, but they're all pretty expensive. Like, yeah. like you can't get like ten megabits anymore. No. You have to get minimum three hundred. Yeah. Which is a lot. And that's yeah. not much different than what I already have. Yeah. Um and then I was looking into like 5G hotspots or something because those yeah. are cheaper, but uh, I have that phone and it would probably yeah. be just as slow. So whatever. Anyway, are we good? I think we're that good. Is that it? Thanks for hanging out. Everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolfden Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolfden. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. So you can go check us out over there on demand whenever you want. But if you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well because we're also on audio podcasts on any and every podcast service such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, audible.com. Uh, no matter where you get the show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all those respective platforms. Guess what you're going to watch? You're going to watch Scootish. Oh, boy. Uh, he's got the Dune uh, flashlight on screen. Oh, boy. So enjoy that, everybody. Uh, he's playing Princess Peach Showtime. And if you gift two subs, he has to start the whole game over. I don't know why he's doing that, but that's how he's playing it. Thanks for watching. I haven't streamed in a while. I'm going to probably be back on Thursday. I have a new Game Boy Advance to mod. Ooh. Uh, and then sometime this week, I'm going to have my PAX video up. It's going to take a really long time because there's a lot of footage. Might go up later than it usually does this week. Whatever. See you later. Goodbye. Bye.